friends so i'm back from new york which is awesome um i also have my sewing machine back woo woo here it is completely not facing the camera in any way that is useful to you um so she got cleaned and there were some um belts that needed to get replaced and a new hook so all that happened so that's great um I'm excited to start sewing with her again because I have missed her. It's currently Tuesday and I took Sunday and Monday off because I didn't have my sewing machine. I could have pulled up my spare but honestly I was exhausted. I did a massage yesterday <laughs> and I got steamrollered and it's like one of those massages that you know it's going to be awesome later but right now it hurts like an mf -er because she pushed on all sorts of places that I've never been pushed on before. So I thought I would run down all the things that I need to do, not all of which are going to happen today. Um, so I'm just going to work for a little bit tonight and then tomorrow night I'm going to a pink concert and on Thursday night I'm going to go see Aladdin the musical, which is really funny because we just went backstage on Aladdin. Um, if you guys didn't see that New York vlog, I will link it down below for you. Um, there's a lot of backstage Aladdin stuff in there with Bernadette. Um, yeah, so... I'm just going to roll through all the stuff that I have to do right now and then I will mostly work on the weekend I think. I'm just going to put this day into basically next week's vlog <laughs> um, because I think I'm only going to get one real day to sew today so just adding it in there. Uh, and then I'll do this weekend and up till Thursday of next week. Uh, I think I have a few things to do next week too but not nearly as bad as this week. So the first thing I need to do, I was going to say finish this but and like put a closure on it, but actually this thing has been bothering me the whole time that I was in New York. It's really hard to see how sloppy it is, but it's super sloppy. Like, I mean, you can see this wrinkling here that's happening and stuff. It's just because this is pleated, but it's pleated in there weirdly and I didn't like iron it. I pinned it down and stuff, but I didn't iron it right and stuff. I'm, I'm going to pick out the whole waistband basically is what I'm saying. And I'm going to pleat, the other thing I did was I sewed the waistband onto here and then I just pleated it in and so it's like, you know, holding it open over here. It wasn't really working. Um, so I'm going to take it off the waistband, pleat the whole thing, iron those pleats in really good, and then re-sew on the waistband so it's straight and flat. And then I just need to put on a closure and put the tapes in so that it holds over the bustle. Um, this is that. Um, so that's that. What else? I got some buckram in the mail. Um, this is 20 yards of heavy buckram, um, which I actually already have, I think, 15 yards in my, um, closet there, and maybe some other buckram, but I got told, um, for people who make hats, that all the machines that make buckram are no longer operational, so all the buckram that is in the world is all the buckram we're gonna get, and not to worry, they will replace it with something else, I'm sure. Buckram wasn't the original. They used to make um, hats out of this stuff that was very similar. It was basically like, so Buckram is just cotton threads that are in this mesh shape, and then there's glue on them um, to stiffen it. And it used to be done with like basically grass. Um, so, and that stuff was actually a lot sturdier back in the day than even this is, um, and a better material. So, anyway, I have been slowly buying up stores of buckram because I do make hats and actually my favorite part of costume making is making hats so I don't get to do it very often because you know I always need a dress to go with the hat but you know here we are um also my Spencer fabric came and it is the most beautiful silk wool blend it's so lovely I'm in love with it <laughs> so yeah it's showing up a little bit brighter in my viewfinder than it actually is. It's, it's a very deep peacock, which I really like. Um, there is my robe anglaise, um, which I need to sew a lining for and then cut the skirt part of the anglaise out and sew that together and then attach them together, basically make one thing. Um, so that needs to just get done um, and I'm not too stressed about that happening um, I gotta figure out how it happens because there's all this pleating that has to get done that I've never done before, so we'll see. And then this is the lining fabric for the anglaise and also, actually that is the lining fabric over there for the anglaise and this is the fabric 
that I was gonna use as a facing on the inside of the skirt to give it a little bit of weight. Um, so those are all the things that I want to try and get done like maybe this weekend or sometime by next week. Um, and then we'll regroup and see how we're doing from there. I also have discovered that getting feet for the Bernina is like a nightmare. I've got a few feet. Are they in here? I thought I brought them in here. I don't know where they are. Anyway, I got a few new feet for the Bernina. Oh, here they are. And these are like, I don't know, anywhere from 20 to like $150 on the internet, which is crazy. Not these particular ones, but just feet in general. So I'm cataloging what feet I have also. And then I'm going to see what I am missing. Like I would love a rolled hem foot and stuff like that. So I found a, a source to buy them. So I'm going to get a few of those um, sometime soon. I also have the fabric that I bought in New York, which is in a suitcase. And that um, needs to be like logged in the book <laughs> and then um, put away somewhere. I don't have any actual room in these cabinets though, so why are you not focusing on me? There we go. Um, I don't have any room in these cabinets here, so not sure what I'm gonna do. I have some stuff in the cabinets, it probably doesn't need to go in the cabinets and I could probably find a better place for that stuff. So I will attempt to, to reorganize a little bit of that stuff. So I do need to clean and, you know, get myself organized. I think tonight's probably gonna be a get my shit together day. So that's what's happening. Um, yeah, so that'll set you up for this vlog. Uh, hopefully I will get a ton of stuff done. Um, that would be very useful. This weekend I have tea with my girlfriends on Saturday, so that'll just take a few hours. And on Sunday, I am supposed to go visit Kathy Hay up in uh, the North Bay. I don't remember what town she's in, but somewhere in the North Bay um, where she's staying. So that'll be you know, several hours of driving up there, going to hang out with her, and then coming back. So, um, this is my life. <laughs> Trying to stay on this massively crazy schedule while I keep my social life going. So, these are the realities of a sewer. Um, I think that's all I have to report right now. I will get back to you as things progress. Oh, I did want to give you guys a quick little update. The thing I'm listening to right now is Agatha Christie's And Then There Was None. Um, which I think they also made into a movie, which for some reason I thought was a western my whole life, and and then there were none. Um, but it's not, it's a murder mystery. <laughs> um, so I'm listening to that right now. I don't know if I love Agatha Christie or not. I've, I've listened to two of her audiobooks. One was The Secret of Chimneys, and this one is And Then There Were None. And both of them I find very simplistic and I think it's largely because like she helped pioneer the murder mystery novel um I mean I'm sure you know like Arthur Conan Doyle Sir Arthur Conan Doyle did that also and a bunch of other people but you know she was involved in in the early days of murder mysteries like becoming a big thing and so everything else is like based on her novels so like and then there were none it's not really like Clue but it's kind of like Clue so anyway you're just sort of used to more complicated things and we make movies out of these so they they become bigger than they are in the books and stuff so I'm wondering if I think they're simplistic because of that so I'm not sure yet but I am gonna keep listening to Agatha Christie novels because I think I like a good murder mystery but also like it's interesting to see the roots of where these came from anyway so that's what I'm listening to what are you guys listening to or watching in the background or whatever oh Game of Thrones I'm not gonna say anything but Game of Thrones um, so, yeah, let me know what you guys are listening to or what you're, you know, watching or whatever in the background. Um, my audiobook addiction rages on. I think I'm almost done with this and I'm going to start another one and I don't know what I'm going to listen to next. I bought a bunch of stuff on the $5 Audible sale, so we'll see. I really didn't really talk about why this bothers me so much. <laughs> um, so when I was in New York the whole week, I was thinking about this and how manky this looks and whatever. And I was just thinking like, well, I could leave it because it's gonna get definitely covered up by another overskirt and a bodice and whatever, and no one will ever know about it. But the whole point of this for me is to like make myself better as a sewing person. My cat really wants to come in here. Um, <laughs> as a sewing person, as a person who sews, I want to get better and I want to do things correctly and I want them to look nice and I, 
you know, I know. Even though everybody else won't know, I know. And yeah, I'm in a hurry, but I'm not in so much of a hurry that I shouldn't like fix this mess. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like a lot of people are jamming for the con all the time, you know? <laughs> they're like trying to get the thing finished really fast because they're doing everything at the last minute and stuff. And fortunately, I'm not doing everything at the last minute so I can afford the time to pick this back out and like fix it and whatever. Um, but more importantly, like, I just, like, I want to, I want to do it right, and I want it to look nice it, on its own, and I want it to be good, so it bothered me the whole week I was in New York, like, I sat there thinking about this waste man, which is a stupid thing to think about when you're in New York, but I was just like, you know, I'm not gonna leave it. Yes, baby! <sighs> He's such a little monster. Anyway, so that's why this is happening. <laughs> I know I could leave it and no one will know and it's not a big deal and whatever, but I know and this isn't for everyone else. This is for me. So, you know, that's how it is. I'm really sorry about my cat. Okay, rad, because it's Friday and I filmed all that stuff on Tuesday and then like I cleaned up a little bit and then I just sort of like wandered out of this room and never came back. So I still have to do all that stuff. Awesome. <laughs> this is how it is. Um, <laughs> I'm sure you've all been there. Anyway, so I still have to do all that stuff. Um, I did want to mention something else. This is like the chattiest vlog ever, I think. I think I just want to come on here and talk for a week and have no work done. Anyway, uh, <laughs> something happened while I was in New York that I like never mentioned, but um, other people have been mentioning to me. So anyway, I hit a thousand subscribers on YouTube and that's not very many, like compared to so many people. But for me, that's crazy. Like there's a thousand of us that are hanging out doing this. So that's awesome. Uh, so I just wanted to say hi and thank you. And if you're new, welcome. Um, and I'm very excited to have you. This is not a job for me. I don't make money on YouTube yet. Or, I mean, I used to on my old, my old channel. Um, I had a, I have a makeup channel, I guess. Um, and that was monetized for quite some time, but I never really made that much money on it. I made a couple hundred bucks. It was no big deal. YouTubers don't make money like people think they make money. Just, just say, putting that out there. Anyway, <laughs> so, um, this is just a hobby for me. So I am shocked that there's even a thousand of you here. So, hi, and thank you. And thank you to everyone who sent me messages about it. That was really sweet. Anyway, I'm gonna go deal with <laughs> the rest of this stuff again. Um, I think it's like nine o'clock at night on Friday. Um, so I think my goals for tonight are to get this waistband off and to do some measurements on it. I'm not even expecting myself to have like pleated it or anything today, but we'll see. And then clean this mess up a little bit and maybe iron this guy. Um, although maybe I should just iron it before I need it. I don't know, maybe I'll just fold it up. Anyway. I just need to get myself together um, this week. I had a, a crazy week. I went and saw Aladdin, which we went backstage on in the New York vlog. I'll link that down below for you. Um, there's a lot of backstage stuff in from Aladdin in that video. Bernadette took us on a tour, so it was awesome. Um, yeah, so I got to see Aladdin this week, and um, what else did I do? That was Thursday. What was Wednesday? I don't even remember like two days ago. This is where my life is. Um, anyway, I did I did stuff all week. Um, oh, I went to saw I went to see Pink, and the Pink show was amazing. Actually, like I don't even own any of her albums, but the show was so 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 good. Um, it's very family friendly. Um, she does all sorts of aerial stuff. It was like watching Cirque du Soleil while Pink sings and keeps her voice like her voice is like doesn't lose pitch at all, it's crazy. Like, she's so good, and she's such a nice human being who does, like, so much good for the world that she just never even talks about, so. Anyway, I just love her. I think she's awesome. Um, so it's a great show. So I highly, highly recommend going to see her if you guys are even vaguely interested. Anyway, I'm gonna clean up a little bit and then get this stuff started, and we'll see where we get to tonight. Okay, for reals this time, take two. Okay, that took about an hour. Um, but it is much, much, much better to me. Like, I am so much happier with it. You guys are probably like, whatever, Noel, it doesn't even matter. Um, <laughs> it matters in my head, and that's all that matters, right? 
this costume is for me and a little bit for Bernadette, <laughs> but largely for me. So, um, anyway, I'm much happier with it. It's not in my brain as some mess up now, and I learned something, so that's even better because yay learning. Okay, so I'm going to move on from here and do the side closure and figure out the tape situation underneath so that it holds the bustle up. The tapes basically pull this seam here and this seam here, the one with the pocket in it, to like they pull it to the back so that all this ruffly stuff stays back here and doesn't like sort of flatten out and cause poofy weird side things. So that's what I'm going to work on now and get those in so that this skirt is feature complete as far as construction. Um, I probably will add trim to the skirt. Late um, 1880s didn't have too much trim, but I like me some trim. <laughs> so I'm going to add some, perhaps. So I'm going to make all the clothes first um, and then worry about trimming them because dressed is better than naked, right? And trim is arguable. So, and also late 1880s didn't always have a lot of trim, like all the stuff I have on my wall. Um, what is late 1880, 1880s up there? Like these guys are. Um, and they don't really have trim that much in them, so yeah. Okay, I'm over here looking at this. Um, so I did have a lot of like decorative edging and stuff going on in this particular. This is the young lady's journal. Um, little bits of pleating that happened. A lot of it happened in the skirts. I'm not pleating my skirts, so. Um, my overskirt will have, this guy has some trim on it over here. Um, this guy has some ruffle coming out from underneath um, or some pleating coming out from underneath. I'm probably just gonna do a very small subtle thing towards the bottom like this does. But man, look at these fabrics. Into that. Uh, this is a little bit actually later than what I'm making. I'm making more like 1886 um, than 1888, which is what that is. Um, so I could probably get away with just a little bit more stuff. So anyway, we'll see how it goes. I am very excited about Watson, especially now that I hung out with Bernadette a little bit and I saw more of Sherlock. I'm like, oh, we're gonna look so cute together. Anyway, I'm gonna work on the, the rest of the stuff, like I said, for the skirt and get it feature complete as far as like wearability is concerned, because um, that is what's important. <laughs> and uh, I can get away with no trim if I need it and add trim later, so that's always my MO, is to make the clothes first and even if they wear them with no trim, that's cool, I'll trim them out next time. Uh, I hope, it's costume college, so I hope that I'll, I'll get it done. Okay, we had zooming issues. Anyway, then I'm gonna move on to making the ribbon glaze. Um, 17 something somethings. What do we want to call that? 1790s ish anglaise, 1780s anglaise, I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, I'm getting that done next, I think. That is a wearable mock up, which might actually be the thing that I wear on my trip, depending on how much time I have. So, like I said, getting feature complete on something to wear, and then we will see about making a bigger and better version, but I wanted to get that pattern settled and make sure it fit right and all that stuff before I cut into expensive fabric for that. It fits really well though, so I'm really excited about that. Okay, moving on. Book update is that I'm listening to The Five Elements of Effective Thinking by Edward B. Berger and Michael Starbird. So far, it's pretty good. Um, I got that in the Audible, five dollar sale uh and i thought i should maybe get some books that would improve my brain so that's what i'm doing it's teaching me ways to think about things differently so that you can be more successful in like learning and i'm sitting here listening to all of the examples they give because they have you like stop and think about something in your life that you're trying to learn blah 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 and i'm like oh all this sewing stuff that i'm doing so it's actually useful for this too, so it seemed okay and it wasn't a very long book. So I think it's like three hours, so it's a nice break in between things that I'm listening to. I'll let you know how it is when it's over, but so far it's pretty good. 
Uh, it's kind of dry though, so like you kind of have to want to learn this stuff in order to make this interesting. <laughs> Gotta warn you. It's not like a deep dive, uh, like super interesting novel or anything. Okay, we have a side, side closure and we have tapes on the inside that are making sure the bustle doesn't fall down to the sides, which is great. Um, and I think this skirt is awesome. I've had some ideas about trim while I've been sitting here that are even better than the ones I had before, so I might consider changing. I'm not sure. We'll see. I'm going to hang this guy up and move on to the next task, which is, I think, ironing that out. I also have to measure out the skirt fabric for the robe, so maybe I'll do that. I should have done that before I left for my trip. <laughs> I knew I should have done that before I went, went left for my trip, but I didn't do it. And now I'm like, oh, okay, so I gotta pull out all the pieces and remember everything that Claudian told me. Um, that right there is the, the pile of the robe. So we're gonna get going on that. I think, um, I don't know how far I'll get, but I figure one tiny step, right? <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Okay, we're at it Saturday. I didn't do much more last night. I just like tied it up again and then made a huge mess and this is my life. So today I <laughs> procrastinated sewing so far by, um, let's see. I filmed a video review of this Shirley Victorian 261 skirt pattern. If you haven't seen that video, it'll be in my video section. Um, go check it out. I edited that video <laughs> and posted it what else did I do? I wrote down notes for a video on the Regency Day dress pattern. I received and panicked about this. This has been sitting on a pile for the last more than a week. Um, telling me that I need to pick out my costume college stuff. So I brought it in here, but that's dumb because I'm not going to do it in here. And yeah, so I'm going to take that back out. Um, but I, this does need to get done sometime soon. So yeah, so now I have this giant mess on my table and I need to clean this up. So I'm going to do that and then I'm going to start on the 18th century gown, the anglaise. Um, I'm going to do the lining, I think. I have to deal with the sleeves. Oy vey. So we'll see how that goes. Um, and then I'll start with the skirt pattern. <laughs> the thing I've noticed is that I say um one million times in any given video. I'm sorry, you guys. If you feel like it, please make a drinking game out of it. I don't really need harassment. <laughs> but if you'd like to make a drinking game after, out of it, I would absolutely promote that. I am not going to say that I haven't made a drinking game about someone, something that people do in videos. I actually really adore sometimes when people are like that. <laughs> uh, there's one person who says a specific word a lot and it's very funny and those of you who know what I'm talking about know what I'm talking about um, <laughs> so when he says that word I drink and game it <laughs> okay well we'll see how this goes uh, hopefully I get far ish because tomorrow's pretty much shot I think I have to leave at 1 30 to go see Kathy and I won't be home until like 8 or 9 at night so maybe I'll film another video tomorrow we'll see I don't know how it's gonna happen I also need to look at my to-do board and start like mapping that actually out to make sure that I get the things I need done by the time I need done them. Them done? I'm done. I can use words today. Okay. I'll update you as I go. Okay, I have one of the sleeves pinned in, so I am full of fear. <laughs> so I'm going to hand base that in and then try it on and make sure it's all good. And then I will, uh, you know, so so in. Sigh. I've had a very frustrating day. I have set this one sleeve in no less than seven times. <laughs> um, and it's still, like, really weird. It says, like, put three tucks in the top towards the back. So I have done that of the sleeve cap. It just looks really weird. Like, there's all this extra crap here and it like fluffs out like this in the back which may be accurate I don't know I keep looking at pictures and there's definitely like something going on behind everybody's self but I don't know it looks really weird 
it doesn't feel right and also this spot like right here is like extra super tight and I have this at um, 3 8 instead of 5 8 now um, actually maybe it's down to a quarter I don't know I like I made the hole basically bigger by taking less of a seam allowance here I almost think I need to cut the arm side here and like use up some of this because there's a lot of fabric that's here that's you know usable I almost think I need to do that but I'm gonna wait for Claudine so I basically need help at this point because I think I'm stuck with like how this works um, and how that's supposed to look and stuff um, so what I'm going to do is like stop working on this robe completely um, because all I'm doing is like I spent my whole day doing this I just like wasted a day basically um, frustrated I've worked on this for like hours and hours um, and I think what I'm gonna do is start working on the petticoat for this outfit it's the only other thing I'm, I'm slated for doing this month is this robe so basically I can't do it so the skirt um, which is really a petticoat and this is a petticoat too um, I might work on those try to get them out of the way I may start working on the overskirt here I'm not sure which one I'm gonna do but I'm just basically gonna replace this item with something else from my list um, for whatever time I have tomorrow and then the rest of this week because I'm at a standstill and this is the breaks like this is how it goes when you're sewing a lot of people have been commenting that they enjoy my vlogs because I show them the reality of things so the reality of the what I look like right now is not good either I'm kind of a mess <laughs> I'm a little frustrated and pissed <laughs> so um this is how sewing is though like sometimes you just like you try and you try and try and it's not working so instead of like just rushing and slamming my head against this wall all night what I'm gonna do is just stop this project and wait and get help from someone who knows what the heck they're doing <laughs> and then um, do some other stuff so I'm gonna read the instructions on how to do the petticoats um, I'm gonna make an under petticoat and then an over petticoat for that um, and they'll fit on top of my uh, pocket hoops so that should be something that's doable for me to do. So, um, gonna work on that. It's like 2.30 in the morning, so I'm calling it for tonight. And then tomorrow morning I'm basically on all day, so I don't know what time I'm gonna have to work on stuff, so we'll see how much stuff gets done tomorrow. I'm clear at this point, but I'm a little, like, well, frazzled anyway, so I need a break. Anyway. I will hit it afresh tomorrow. <laughs> this is the reality of things. Okay, it's Sunday. Um, so Claudine says I need to move these pleats even farther back, which I had farther back, and they looked even worse back there, so. Um, yep. <laughs> uh, gonna not worry about this right now. She's gonna come over and help me next weekend, so I'm just going to drop this part of the, the problem and then move on to working on something else. I might cut out and um, like get the facing done for the skirt part of this I guess today and then also think start thinking about the petticoats and like how that works. Um, so I need to do some measurements and I need my husband to be awake for that so he's not. Um, and my cat is screaming outside. I do also need to like <clears throat> figure out what overskirt I'm going to make for my uh, Watson, so I might do some of that. So I think I'm going to get some things together and try and get some little things knocked off right now. I also erased all of the months. I was looking at my to-do list trying to figure out what I would do today. Um, and then I found that the months were just constraining me. Um, were it's like dictating what I would work on when, when, like, if I feel like it, I should work on whatever I want, right? So, so anyway, I just took that off. It did let me know that I have enough time to get everything done because the months worked out okay. So, um, I feel like I, I do have enough time to get all this done, uh, if I, if I don't have any more sleeve battles. <laughs> so, um, yeah. 
So we've gotten a lot of stuff done in the last like hour. I pulled out my pocket hoops and got them measured so I know what the difference is between my front waist to floor measurement and my side waist to floor measurement is so that I can make the skirt and the petticoat or the petticoat and the under petticoat for this outfit so that I can when the sleeve thing gets resolved um, be able to you know finish it and know that everything's okay uh, I picked out what I'm going to use for Watson. I like this summer overskirt. I think it's cute and it'll be summer when I wear it, so that's cute. And the other great thing about this outfit is I can probably make more than one overskirt and just have a bunch of options for it if I want to. This is the most like fun. There was a bunch that looked very informal and stuff, so I was like, I don't know. And then I decided on this bodice, although I don't know if I'm going to do the collar or not. We'll see. I really like the back of it. I think it looks really sweet. Um, so we'll see how that goes. I have never <laughs> made this pattern before. So I have about an hour before I need to leave. I think I'm probably going to cut these two patterns out so that the pieces are ready to go. Um, and then like into, I cut the pattern out, the pattern paper, not the pattern on material. And then... Um, maybe s start figuring out to cut this guy out. So, we will see. Okay, so I have a million pieces cut out for this jacket. <laughs> there are so many pieces, um, except two that are left. I did leave the full pattern for the sleeves, and I think what I'm gonna do is cut out the full pattern and then mark in my line, um, and then sew the mock-up and try it because I keep having sleeves that are just slightly too tight. So this would allow me to have like a lot more room to work with. Um, and then I could figure out what line I'm actually sewing on and then cut that out for the next time I wanna use this jacket so I don't have to like worry about it every time. So that's my plan. I'm gonna go see Kathy right now. So I will continue this when I get home. Hey guys, I found Kathy. Uh, do you want to tell everybody who you are and what you do? Okay, I am Kathy Hay. I am uh, the founder of a website called Foundations Revealed, which is really more than a website. It's a sewing community. We have a vast library of content about any kind of, particularly corsets, but historical costumes too that you might want to make, how to do it, how it was done in the past, how it's really done, you might say, how to get the results you see on social media that you might find it difficult to uh, to do on your own. We have live workshops once a month with people who really know their stuff. Like, Those are awesome. Yeah. That was that thing that Bernadette and I were wa watching right. in that video. Yes, with people like Luca, who you saw in that video, and Brett. who is from the, yes. <laughs> from the School of Historical <laughs> Dress, and with uh, Barbara Black oh, from she's Royal so Black cool. Corsets. And Luana. Couture, yes, and Luana Shea from mm -hmm. Vanyanis who makes the most incredible smooth corsets, which are like, she has to tell her followers, look, this is not photoshopped. Mm -hmm. Every picture she posts, she has to go like, by the way, no photoshop. <laughs> yeah. Which, yeah. No filter. So, yeah. <laughs> so they are there in these live workshops once a month and in our private Facebook group all the time to give you like actual professional mentorship, not just like, a group of voices on the internet going, try this. Yeah, it's not this, like a Facebook this. group. Like it's yeah. legit. It's learning. housed on a Facebook group, but it is yeah. yeah, with mentorship and with actual teachers you can go to who will tell you how to do it and how to do it right. So that is uh, a library. We have new articles every week and the live workshops every month and a Facebook group where people can like upload pictures of their I used their to web produce that. It's yeah. a lot, it's yeah. a lot. It it's was enough that. that I was like, I'm done web producing that now. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not like something where you've got to read all the content all the time. Yeah, it's no. Like we produce lots of stuff. And it comes out and in you, a you digestible you format too. Whatever, yeah. you, whatever it is you're working on, whatever it is yeah. you like to make. Yeah. Know? So, yeah. Okay, so what do, we, what do people do if they want to join and how much is it? If they want to join, we open for enrollment about every three or four months at the moment. Uh, you can get on our waiting list by going to foundationsreal.com and there's an article you can download on the front page about uh, 
getting over procrastination that will put you on the mailing list. You can also just <laughs> try to read and click on any of the articles. It'll say, we're close to enrollment by now, but sign up to the mailing list here. So that's the best way to do it. I remember it's super useful. I use it all the time. And even if it's not like useful directly for what you're doing, a lot of times I look at articles that have nothing to do with what I'm doing, but I learn something that I'm like, oh, that's applicable. Yeah. Or so you're watching other people's projects in the group. Yeah. And you're like, oh, mental note. Note yeah. to self for when I'm in those. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, it's awesome and I highly recommend it. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, we're gonna go to dinner now. I do too. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. it's Monday um so I have these two pieces to cut out which are the weird ones <laughs> and then I'm gonna cut out this the overskirt fabric or sorry the overskirt pattern as well um I'm kind of tired today so I'm just trying to get this done and see if I get there um first and then decide if I want to go farther to me I like any forward momentum is good <laughs> so just getting up and doing the one task is good enough. You know what I mean? Like, you don't have to finish every single thing. And you don't have to drown yourself in it. But forward momentum is good. So, um, I spent a lot of time thinking about this sleeve. <laughs> um, so, I, I feel like you can't let it get you down. And <laughs> you kind of keep trying. Um, so... This will get resolved this weekend one way or another. Either we will figure out how to set this sleeve in or Claudine and I will make one the 18th century away or something will happen. But we'll figure this out. So that's where I'm at right now. I'm just going to cut tonight um, the rest of this paper and hope that that all gets done. And then as long as that gets done, I'll be happy. So we'll see how it goes. Okay, these are both cut out, which is great. Forward motion once again <laughs> honestly i feel like this week has been super unsuccessful in a lot of ways because i've gotten very little done except talking thanks to my days of <sighs> sleeve turmoil um but sometimes this is how it is so i guess this is a a true truth in vlogging and i feel like the best thing you can possibly do is to do something else okay so then i could cut this out that's going to take cleaning off this table to do because these pattern pieces are the size of this table. So maybe I'll um, move all this fabric off the table and pull out the fabric for this and see how much energy I have after I get all that done. I might also just go edit the video that you're watching right now and get that started because um, that's a thing that has to happen also. So yeah. I'm not super feeling like cutting fabric today, so maybe I'll just clean off the table and get it ready to go and pull the fabric out so that it's ready next time I want to cut, which is probably tomorrow. Sounds like I did go to Joanne today and get um, interlining for this guy, um, tapes so that I can put the tapes on the inside of this guy, and thread for this. So at least all that's taken care of. So I'm not unproductive, so that's good. Okay, I think I'm just gonna clean off this table because it's kind of a mess um, with other projects and get started um, pulling that out so that I can start moving forward on getting this guy going. Hello, it's Wednesday. Uh, I did in fact, so, or not so, but I came in here and did something yesterday. I just didn't have the heart to film it because all I did was cut out my pattern. Uh, I cut out the fabric um, for the overskirt and it is now ready to be sewn. I'm having a little bit of <laughs> weirdness. This pattern only has 13 instructions and it seems really simple. The only thing that sucks about it is that it says to go ahead and sew the thing together and then before you do all the cool bustling stuff, put on all the trim because it's gonna be too hard later to do that. And I'm like, uh, lame. Because I was hoping to do all the trim for everything later. So it looks like I'm, this project is gonna take me longer than I hoped. I thought this was gonna be like a whip it together in a day thing. It's not, because I'm gonna have to make all the trim and that's a lot of pleating and stuff, so. Um, yeah, gonna do that then. 
So I'm gonna start working on this today. Uh, I'm on my lunch break right now. I am working from home today, so um, I thought I would spend my lunch break just sewing instead of going out to get lunch. I just ate something simple. Um, so, yeah, I'm ready. The one other weird instruction that I got on this was to go ahead and tape the back pieces together, like these pieces, on your pattern. Tape them together before you cut them out. But this didn't exist, <laughs> so... I hope they just updated the pattern and forgot to update the instructions, otherwise my things can look weird, but it's what's in there. There's no like auxiliary pieces and they look the correct shape for what these pattern pieces show like, so we'll see. Anyway, I'm gonna get sewing and get um, as much of this done in the next, you know, 40 minutes as I can before I'm gonna go back and start working again, but since I'm home today, I thought I would take advantage of it. Okay, I got the back sewn together, so it's one big bag, and I got the top and bottom of it zigzagged. Um, I don't know if you guys know, but silk, so this is silk and poly, but silk likes to shred out, like it likes to come off in these wispy silk hairs, and if you don't zigzag the crap out of it, you get <laughs> problems <laughs> when you're trying to hem and stuff. So I zigzagged it all, and then you have to go along and like, trim off all the extra like you can kind of see where I trimmed like they still stick out a little bit anyway both of these will be covered so it doesn't really matter but um, I don't want a bunch of like detritus in there so I just I'm trying to do it clean Lee cleanly my husband is a grammar Nazi so cleanly um, <laughs> uh, I also did front seam here um, and I'll probably do the sides front seam as well so that all the seams are taken care of um, inside of that so I'm gonna go back to work and check out what's going on there and then when I'm done working I'll come back and keep working on this I'm hoping to get like at least the base of it sewn together today maybe tomorrow I'm going to see Avengers tonight I actually have a massage but um, I could probably sew afterwards or whatever so we'll see how I feel though no commitments getting stuff done though just a brief pause to say hello and it's the evening and I have pinned the hem into this curve which turned out better than I thought it would. I have also hemmed the back part so I have to do two of these front parts and make sure they go in the opposite directions <laughs> and then sew them together uh, and then I have to start making trim I think. Yeah so <laughs> here we go. Okay, this crazy pile <laughs> now represents two backs and a front, <laughs> uh, which has been French seamed in and the extra has been hemmed somewhat nicely. So I'm pretty proud of that hem. Um, I have one more front to add um, and then the waistband before I start trimming this guy. But it's like 12 midnight and uh, I feel like I want to go to sleep or at least rest. So <laughs> I'm going to stop for today. Okay, so I am actually going to end this vlog also here because I feel like it's out of hand. <laughs> I've been editing it and I'm like, oh, that's really long. So I'm going to end this vlog here and pick it up tomorrow or maybe Friday, probably Friday uh, for the next vlog. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this vlog. Uh, it was a lot of rambling. It was not a lot of sewing for once and I'm really sorry about that but them's the breaks and that is how sewing goes sometimes. Sometimes you just butt your head against the wall. This bad boy and I will do battle this weekend I'm sure. Okay I hope you guys had a great week and leave me notes below on what you guys are working on, what you're listening to. I'm listening to The Clockmaker's Daughter which was recommended by one of you guys. Uh, and it was on the $5 Amazon sale and it was, it's actually pretty good. It's a little hard to get into, but once you get into it, you're like, oh, mystery. So I'm enjoying that. Yeah. Okay. I hope you guys have a, a great next week and I will see you soon. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't. Bye guys.